And I just did a calculation this morning. You are the first one to hear that, that the object will come closest and NASA did not discuss them. Instead of what they did, which is to say, you know, we pretty much uh, know that it's an object of the type that we have seen before. They should have emphasized the mysteries or they should not have held the press conference because they didn't have much new information. It'll be, it'll be a very sort of heavy spaceship to be make it all out of nickel. Oh, yeah. Um, and so. fucking huge. The size of Manhattan and all nickel. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. November 9th. Thousands of eyes were locked on NASA's live stream. Not for entertainment, for answers. 3i Atlas. The third interstellar visitor ever detected. The third object in human history confirmed to have come from beyond our solar system. For weeks, the feed had been unremarkable. A distant comet glowing against the void. Standard observation protocol. Nothing unusual. Until the camera shifted focus, the image sharpened, and for exactly 3.7 seconds, something appeared on screen that should not exist on a comet. Two symmetrical blue jets. Hard edges. Flat geometric planes. Perfect bilateral symmetry. Then, darkness. Not a technical glitch. Not a buffer error. A manual shutdown. Within minutes, NASA scrubbed the stream from existence. Atlas was immediately reclassified under a restricted monitoring designation. Subscribe now and drop your theory in the comments before we go deeper. From the moment of its discovery on July 1st, 2025, nothing about Atlas made sense. Its trajectory violated every expectation. It entered our inner solar system at an angle no natural comet should take. A steep, aggressive dive that defied conventional orbital mechanics. Its chemical composition was wrong. Spectroscopic analysis revealed iron and nickel in ratios that resembled industrial processing, not cosmic formation. The kind of ratios you'd find in refined alloys in manufactured materials. And then there was the color. Atlas glowed electric blue, not the pale white or soft yellow of water ice sublimating in sunlight. Blue, a wavelength that requires extreme ionization, temperatures that should obliterate frozen volatiles. Yet somehow, Atlas held together when the James Webb Space Telescope locked onto the object in late August. It captured something that stopped researchers cold. A carbon dioxide coma stretching 348,000 kilometers across space. Nearly the full distance from Earth to the moon. But that wasn't the disturbing part. The thermal imaging was. Comets heat predictably. Sunlight warms the surface. Energy conducts inward. Volatiles sublimate outward. It's a passive, chaotic process. Atlas wasn't doing that. It had hot zones, deep inside the nucleus. Internal heat sources arranged in repeating geometric patterns, stable configurations that shouldn't exist in a tumbling ball of ice and rock, as if something beneath the surface was generating its own energy, not from solar radiation, from within. Natural comets don't maintain geometric heat patterns. They crack under thermal stress. They outgas erratically. They tumble chaotically through space. Atlas did none of these things. NASA quietly escalated monitoring. Internal memos, later leaked to the press, instructed observation teams to document internal structural anomalies. That exact phrase, the same terminology used for malfunctioning satellites and spacecraft diagnostics, not comets, spacecraft. Researchers stopped calling it a comet in their private communications. They started using a different term, the object. By early October, Atlas was doing something that violated the laws of celestial mechanics. It was accelerating, not decelerating as solar gravity slowed its approach, not coasting at constant velocity, accelerating, gaining speed as it approached perihelion. The leaked data from Harvard's astrophysics department showed a velocity increase of 94 kilometers per day, squared at closest approach to the sun. An object already traveling at 150,000 miles per hour was somehow finding additional thrust. No collision event, no gravitational slingshot, just smooth, continuous acceleration. There's only one natural mechanism that could theoretically explain this, outgassing. When frozen volatiles heat and vent into space, they can produce tiny random thrust vectors, but Atlas wasn't venting randomly. The acceleration was smooth, directional, perfectly synchronized with those um, internal heat signatures detected weeks earlier, then came the mass loss data, and this is where the physics broke down completely. 
in early August, Atlas was shedding approximately 330 kilograms per second, standard sublimation for a small comet. By late October, it was losing nearly 2 million kilograms per second, a 6,000-fold increase. To generate that level of mass loss through natural sublimation, Atlas would require a surface area of 617 square miles. That demands a spherical nucleus at least 14.3 kilometers in diameter, but Hubble's direct measurements had already established the nucleus at only 1 to 2 kilometers across. The math didn't just fail, it collapsed entirely. Avi Loeb, Harvard astrophysicist, former chair of the astronomy department, ran the calculations backward, working from the mass loss rate the observed acceleration, and the confirmed size measurements. His conclusion, for the numbers to reconcile, Atlas would need to fragment into exactly 16 pieces. Not approximately 16, exactly 16. Each fragment adding surface area, each contributing to total sublimation, each functioning as part of a larger system. Three days after Loeb circulated his preliminary calculations, Atlas fragmented into exactly 16 pieces. NASA's official statement called it a rare, highly active disintegration event, but disintegration produces chaos, entropy, disorder, atlas produced geometric order, synchronized motion, system level behavior. The fragments weren't drifting apart randomly. They were arranging themselves into a specific configuration, and every single piece was still accelerating. That's when NASA's live stream, previously ignored by all but the most dedicated astronomy enthusiasts, suddenly attracted worldwide attention. That's when the camera zoomed in for a detailed capture, and that's precisely when everything went dark. November 9th, 2.13 UTC. For the first time, NASA's observation platform captured one of the fragments in high resolution as it passed through a high albedo region where sunlight illuminated it directly. Fragment B. What thousands of live viewers saw in that moment has never been adequately explained. Two jets, perfectly parallel, identical thickness, and luminosity. Aligned at an exact mirrored angle of 31 degrees from the fragment's central axis. That level of symmetry does not occur in nature. Comet dust jets erupt wherever volatile pockets crack under thermal stress. They emerge at random angles. They blur and smear across the coma as the object rotates. Atlas's jets remained fixed, locked in position. As the fragment rotated, the jets compensated bending slightly, adjusting angle to maintain their precise orientation, like gimbaled rocket exhaust, like controlled propulsion. Then the fragment pulsed, not a solar flare reflection, not scattered light from the coma, a surge of luminosity from deep inside the object itself. Several viewers watching live captured screenshots. Frame-by-frame -frame analysis revealed what appeared to be a sharp boundary, hard edges, angular geometry, a surface far too uniform for shattered ice and rock. The instant that outline became visible, the feed terminated. NASA didn't lose the signal. They killed it. Within 30 minutes, an official statement appeared. Unexpected solar interference caused temporary sensor dropouts. But solar interference doesn't trigger manual stream termination. It doesn't activate file lockouts. It doesn't scrub URLs from NASA's public archive. Reddit Astronomy Communities and independent forums spent the next 48 hours reconstructing that final frame. Over 400 user-submitted screenshots were analyzed, aligned, and composited using image enhancement algorithms. The result was disturbing. A fragment shaped not like fractured ice, but like a smooth, curved structure. Two perfectly symmetric blue jets producing clean collimated beams, a faint internal glow pulsing rhythmically from the core. No debris trail. No irregular shadows, suggesting rough terrain, no surface chaos. The more analysts enhanced the image, the less it resembled anything natural, and the more it resembled something engineered. NASA has refused all requests for comment on the blackout. November 10th, Avi Loeb released his formal analysis, measured, technical, peer-reviewed by Harvard colleagues. But the implications were unmistakable. 3i Atlas's fragmentation event may represent a controlled deployment mechanism. The paper outlines seven distinct anomalies that natural physics cannot reconcile. Non-gravitational acceleration without observable cause, perfect fragmentation into exactly 16 components, symmetric mass distribution across fragments, directional thrust vectors from each piece, sustained jet collimation despite rotation, 
internal heat generation without solar input. Blue emission pulses synchronized with acceleration. Then Loeb wrote the line that fractured the scientific consensus. If natural sublimation processes cannot account for the observed non-gravitational acceleration, technological propulsion systems provide a physically viable alternative explanation. He proposed multiple scenarios, an ancient interstellar probe autonomously shedding protective layers, a multi-stage object activating secondary systems upon solar proximity, a self-disassembling artifact using our sun as a trigger mechanism for stage deployment, a technology older than human civilization, possibly older than Earth itself. By November 18th, researchers in Italy, Chile, and Australia all reported the same observation. The fragments weren't simply spreading outward, they were configuring into a specific geometric pattern, a formation that resembled deployment more than dispersion. Then Fragment L did something unprecedented. It produced a sudden flash of blue light far more intense than any previous emission. For exactly 0.8 seconds, it emitted a tightly collimated beam directly toward Fragment H located 12,000 kilometers away. Both fragments immediately responded, they adjusted position, shifted trajectory by small but measurable in increments. It looked like signaling, like coordination. Astronomers who witnessed the event privately used a different term in their communications. Communication through directed thrust. NASA declined to confirm the observation. ESA issued no statement. Harvard's research team responded with a single, carefully worded line. The fragments appear to maintain non-ballistic trajectories. Non-ballistic, not following gravitational laws, not natural motion, meaning something inside those fragments is making active decisions about where to go. So here's the question we're left with. Are we watching a comet die? Or are we witnessing the activation of an interstellar mechanism far older than recorded history? Because if Atlas didn't break apart by accident, if those 16 fragments represent deliberate stages in a sequence, if the jets are controlled propulsion, if the geometry is intentional design, then we didn't just observe a comet's death. We witnessed something complete its mission, something that traveled between stars, something that executed a precise sequence at the exact moment it reached our sun, something not made by human hands and NASA cut the feed the instant we got close enough to see what it really was. The fragments are still out there, still moving, still coordinating, still following instructions we don't understand. What happens when they finish?